What's up everybody, back at it once again for part three of this uh, camp wagon here build. Uh, if this is your first time joining us and you don't really know what's going on, well hey, guess what, join the club. I don't think anyone really knows what's going on here, including myself. <laughs> like I said, this is a camp wagon build, something I've never done before. We're all here learning things together. Um, as you can see here, we got our back seats removed. Um, I believe where we left off last time, uh, was getting a couple of bits and bobs removed. Um, I th think the next step I wanted to do was get the seat belts removed. Uh, I didn't really know exactly how to do that. Um, and guess what, come to find out, you actually don't have to remove them at all. You can really just tuck them right behind this piece of uh, paneling here. So let's see if I can do this with one hand um, while I'm filming. I, you pretty much just have to pop this thing up and over like so, super easy. And now you can just slide, slide your seatbelt. Whoa, right back behind there. Don't want to take it all the way off. But it uh, looks like it's coming all the way off. All right, and now you can just pop it right back on. I don't know if you can see, sorry about that down there. There's one little clip that's just gonna slide, slide right in there. Sorry about that, folks. Um, and then we got one more little clip up top in here. Um, actually, looks like this side only has one clip on the bottom there. The other clip is kind of just over here on the side. Uh, let me see if I can get this back on properly. I gotta put this camera down, folks. All right, so this shouldn't be very difficult. figured out my problem here folks I was bending this clip this side was already it was fully bent in there so I just got to bend this out and now I should be able to pop this bad boy back into place accept it really does not want to go back a little bit of persuasion should do the trick what is going on here folks what am I missing let's see Wow, all right, my friends, after a bit of struggle, which, uh, sorry, but you won't be able to see, I finally got this bad boy back on. As you can see, nice and snug fit here. Uh, I'll show you on this other side, hopefully, what I had to do, if it's not different for some reason. But it was a pain in the butt. Uh, it just took a little bit of finagling. But I got it, of course, you know. We're doing things around here. All right, no more talking. Let's see if we can get this one a little bit easier. Pop this little pillar off here. See, I'm gonna try to not take it off all the way. That's really the main issue I think that I had on the other side, as well as having one of those bent clips. But uh, let's just, I can still show you. What I actually had to do, well, there we go. This whole thing is off now. I had to uh, disconnect this little plastic clip here. Just pops right out. And slide this down because it was getting in the way of the belt from uh, being able to, you know, the belt was getting in the way from everything being able to fit in here snugly. But once I had disconnected that piece, it slid in pretty much like butter. Let's see if I can uh, get it in there nice and smooth. Yep, 
this bad boy popped out. Oh, there was also, I forgot to mention, a little plastic tab on the bottom that slides down into that, that little slot there. I didn't know that was there either. So that was not lined up and that was also giving me some problems. So let's see if we can get this one on a little smoother. Line up that bottom tab first. And then this middle one. Actually the middle one first, cause it's got to slide down. Make sure our seatbelt is still back there. All right, the middle one first, so it slides down bottom one and then should be able to just pop that in there nice and snug bada bing bada boom baby our seat belts are now uh, nice and tightly secured back behind these panels no need to remove them so that just makes things nice and easy very nice all right now that i'm sweaty I believe we can move on to the next step and uh, I think I mentioned yesterday that I wanted to get some wood. Well I haven't made it to the hardware store yet but I did find two pieces of wood just sitting around my house today so try to use these for some mock-ups maybe. Um, first things first, what I didn't realize I wanted to do is I still want to be able to access the, uh, let me get out, still need to be able to access this spare tire back here. Totally forgot there's a spare tire down here. So what I'm gonna have to do is redraw my designs. Let's get this stuff out of here first. And uh, try to make a bed frame that's gonna allow me to access this spare tire as well. So let's first of all, let's get this thing out of here. This is just like a little floor mat. All right, and now we have access to our spare tire down here. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Beautiful, beautiful, full-size spare tire. All right, so I need to be able to access that. So that means our bed frame rails are gonna have to be modified. Good thing I didn't start building them. All right, everybody. Now, first thing I noticed here is this spare tire here, the spare tire compartment, sorry, is not really in the center here. That would have been very ideal. Um, the original way I wanted to build the bed frame was having two by fours lay flat like this, except raised up a little bit. Um, so I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that anymore. I'm gonna have to have these on the side, on their side like that, because look at that. I'm gonna have just enough clearance. If this bad boy is all the way over to the wall where I want it, that leaves me centimeters to get to that spare tire when I need it. Um, so that, you know, things have to change up a little bit. This is why we're doing a mock-up first before building anything. Um, look at that, that's gonna fit perfect. Uh, I could still be able to raise it up a little bit. Just gonna have to put my uh, leg supports sideways like this instead of having them um, horizontal I'm gonna have to just put them vertical shouldn't be too big of a problem um, but the next issue I'm running across here is now that I want to access this spare wheel I'm not gonna be able to put a uh, center bed frame support all the way across um, I'm gonna have to just kind of make almost a U here horseshoe type bed frame right there and then I can start the center center rail after after this part here uh, if that makes sense at all I don't know if I'm making sense right now it uh, but let's see here okay so obviously these boards are not nearly as long as I need them to be but they're a start to get me some uh, general ideas of what's going on here All right, so I'm realizing I can't really do too much else here without getting some more lumber. Um, I guess I can use one of these boards. The main thing I can use one of these boards for actually is figuring out how high off the ground, or look at that, how much further 
is the height of the center console. So, let's see if I set you guys down here for a second and go get my handy dandy tape measure. Which of course I have no idea where it's at. All right, everybody, I got my tape measure. So here uh, I can start to make a couple of measurements, I guess. First things first, I'm gonna need to build the bed frame to be at least, how many more inches higher? Looking by about four inches higher than where the, uh, the trunk floor is sitting right now. Um, and then how many inches is that from the ground? So that's about another 14 and a half inches to the top of this two by four here. So it's a total of about, looks like about 18 and a half. We'll call it 19 just to be safe. So that means my uh, the two by four leg posts, if I want them to touch the floor, uh, they're gonna have to be 18 and a half, 19 inches long. I'm babbling right now. You guys don't care about this probably. You're like, hey, go to the damn uh, hardware store, Home Depot, whatever, and go get some wood. Which is what I'm about to do, my friends. I can't do much else without any wood, so stay tuned. All right, what's up, everybody? Just got back from Home Depot. We ain't playing around, folks. We finally got ourselves some lumber. It's not much, but it'll get us started. You know, got some uh, eight foot two by fours, got some uh, six foot uh, one by sixes for the bed frame slats. So pretty soon here, we're gonna get cooking. But hey, I was thinking about lumber. You know, what do I need? What am I gonna need to cut these two and then I said, hey, wait a second, cut. I just realized I didn't even have a dang saw. So, I don't know if you can see back there, but I got a brand new Ryobi. Got a nice little circular saw. Got a level two. I realized that I really didn't have very many construction tools. You know, most of the work I do uh, is mostly on automotive, cars, bikes, stuff like that. So, had to pick up a couple of things. But you know, we're cooking now, folks. Um, first things first I think I need to do a little bit of learning on that saw it's been a minute since I've used circular saw any kind of saw um, but I'm definitely not a newbie I'm not gonna cut my fingers off I took four years of woodworking classes so just gotta freshen up my knowledge a little bit but hey just chilling here in the back of my my dirty old camp wagon gotta love it uh, love the smell of gotta love the smell of pine my friends um, this is awesome. I wish I could just start cutting right away, but I definitely need to do some measure measurements. I gotta figure out what I'm even doing here. Um, you probably figured out by now, I really have no idea what's going on. This was not really even planned at all. Just kind of like a on the whim type thing, but hey, we're all learning here together, so stay tuned, my friends, and we're going on this journey together. It's gonna be a lot of fun, I already know it. Can't wait to go for my first overnight in this bad boy. But all right, my friends, um, I think that'll probably wrap it up for today's episode. I definitely have a lot of learning to do, a lot of planning to do, so stay tuned, my friends. This is gonna get good. Peace out. All right, my friends, I am back. As you can see by this smile on my face, I'm having too much fun over here. Uh, I started taking some of the wood inside and some of my tools inside. I was going to start learning about that saw, but I was like, hey, you know what? I've got this wood now. Why not start trying to do some mock-ups here? Um, as I mentioned before, I have no clue what I'm doing. I barely have any tools. Uh, as you can see here by my, uh, I don't know, redneck leveling setup I got going over here. I got a little auto jack over there. I got a can of paint over here. Uh, the reason behind the can of spray paint, uh, don't ask me why, but I know that a can of spray paint is exactly eight inches tall, and that's exactly how high I wanted this bed frame to be. Look at that. It doesn't get more perfect than that, my friends. That is super duper level, even though I got some redneck leveling stuff going on here, but uh, this is getting great. Okay, so the reason why I did this is because 
Uh, I need to figure out where the bed frame is gonna end. Um, this is not where it's gonna end, but this is where the fold, if you can see my arm, the fold is gonna happen. So once the, the seats are all the way moved forward, kind of like this one is, um, it'll be able to fold down and extend, hopefully about an extra two feet. Uh, so I'll have a nice long bed frame, uh, bed sleeping area. Um, but obviously for driving purposes, I need to keep the seats back in driving mode. So uh, this is where the bed frame needs to end um, for now until I build that um, foldable extension. So just wanted to try to get some measurements here. Got my tape measure going. Looks like we are gonna stop right around 63 inches, I think is just about as far as I can go. Um, I think I might play it safe and even stop at 62. Um, that way, if I go with 62, I can make my extension 18 inches and then it'll be a total of 80 inches long, which I believe is the typical size of a standard queen bed frame. So it won't be as, as wide as a queen frame, but it'll certainly be as long. And I'm a big boy, so I need this thing to be as long as I can get it. So uh, just trying to get some measurements here. Definitely think I'm gonna go with 62. That leaves me plenty of room, uh, so I don't have to worry about the old hatch up here closing in on my bed frame or anything that's inside. So this is awesome. All right, so first things first, I need to get my handy dandy notebook so I can write down some of these measurements here. Um, start with a fresh page. All right, so we're going with, uh, let's see if you guys, can you guys see this? My top secret notes here. We're gonna go with side length equals 62 inches. Um, and then side height is gonna be, remember how I told you this paint can is, uh, this paint can over here, remember I told you it's eight inches, plus we got a two by four here. This is actually only one and a half inches. So one and a half plus eight, that's gonna give us a total side height of nine and a half inches. Um, now let's see, I don't have the other side set up, so let me do that real quick so I can get some width measurements here. One second folks, I'll be right back. All right, my friends, as you can see, we have our other side all set up and leveled out. And you know, you're probably over there laughing at my uh, spray paint auto jack stand uh, leveling technique. But hey, it works pretty dang good. That's not perfectly level on this side, but it's close, you know? And the only point of using these, these jack stands as levels in the front, I'm just trying to get a rough estimate of uh of what this thing's gonna look like so trust me things are gonna be better when i actually do the the real measurements for the real cuts all that stuff but uh hey let's get back to the the side side measurement here what kind of length what kind of width we got going on look at that my friends our width is gonna be a dang near perfect 40 inches that is awesome super cool so we have a uh, we'll just call it a width a ghost just slammed my car door closed but that's okay uh, 40 inches so look at that my friends we have a rough estimate of what our uh, main bed frame is gonna look like 62 inches wide I mean sorry 62 inches long it's going to be nine and a half inches high and roughly 40 inches wide now uh i'm going to do the side the side uh the sides uh one big main piece but as i mentioned before uh one issue that i came across is i still need to be able to access this so what i'm going to do is kind of build two separate halves maybe even three parts to this bed frame so that i can actually lift this half up 
and still be able to access this. I'm sweating, my friends. It's getting hot out here. It's past my dinner time. I need to go inside soon. Um, but then the middle part, that's gonna be, you know, nice and sturdy. And then the, uh, the last part over there on the end that folds down, gonna have to try to figure out how I'm gonna do all of this. But um, as you can see, my friends, I'm having a lot of fun so far and it's just gonna keep getting better. So stay tuned. This is it, finally done for the day. Peace, my friends.